Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebass.com. That's the home of free video double bass lessons online. So if you're interested in more like this one, please go and check out the website after this video. Now, I was playing a piece that you heard at the beginning called Tune for Bob, which is one of my compositions. And in today's lesson, I'm gonna talk you through the piece, explain the concept behind it, and let you know about what fingerings I'm using, uh, and of course, what notes I'm playing. So let's get started. Well, I came up with the idea for this composition uh, whilst I was working on another lesson that's due for release shortly on playing tenths on the double bass. And uh, tenths, the interval of a tenth, really suits uh, the instrument. So these minor tenths, or even major tenths, sound absolutely terrific. And the piece that I came up with after listening back to it, I realised it sounded similar to another one of my favourites, which is composed by Kurt Elling and Bob Amster, and it's called The Waking. Now, this piece is, as I say, one of my, you know, all-time kind of favourite pieces for voice and double bass, so I'll provide a link below in the lesson notes so you can see and listen to exactly what that is. Um, but after listening back, I realised they did actually sound similar, so I've called this tune a, uh, a tune for Rob, and it's dedicated to Rob Amster, who passed away in 2013. Now, it's based in the key of G uh, major, and it starts with a kind of pentatonic sort of fill, um, which starts on the open D, and it's open D hammering on to E, and then you get the open G. The open G. So open D to E, and then the open G, and then the E again, and then the root note of the whole thing, which is G, this low G. So let's say that again. And it's a little bit faster. Okay. So we get this lovely kind of pentatonic sound at the start. That's what it sounds like up to tempo. And with the right hand here, I, I honestly, I vary actually what I do with the right hand, but I'm pretty sure that at points I was actually plucking the, the, uh, the low note on the E string with my third finger, which is something that I do when the string crossing is, feels too far. Now there, it wasn't too bad, but I would also sometimes be playing with this third finger on the low note, and I only do this when I'm doing awkward string crossings um, because the, th the finger doesn't really sound as good as the other one so I wouldn't recommend kind of adding in the third finger all the time but if you're doing stuff that's um, I don't know you know that kind of requires a lot of skipping strings it, it is something you know a technique that you can employ so we've got this riff at the beginning and then I immediately follow the low G with the note B, which is the tenth. All of these chords that you'll hear today are tenths, uh, which is a major third all the way up an octave, gives us the interval of a, of a tenth, or major tenth in this instance. So that's the major third, and it's quite a bright sound. Now, it immediately moves on to a minor tenth, this darker sound, which is C to the open A. And I follow, I think I play a little ghost note as well. Yeah. So ghost note on the D, the C, and then the A. Let's go from the beginning. And then the little finger is already above the harmonic, um, above the note C. But this note is actually a G. So. I play the C harmonic, which is gives you the note G, and then the note that's above the D, which is actually just a D, so they're the two kind of pitches that you get. And after playing the, um, the D harmonic here, which is just at the first position of the neck heel, I follow it up with a low B, which is in exactly the same spot. So I'm using the first finger for all of these uh, notes, and the next one is the harmonic that's above the note A, which is also an A. So it's... So... And then 
I side from the B to the A, and I play the, the note which is above the G. And then it repeats itself. And I'm repeating the riff around, uh, round and round, and it happens four times. And then eventually I get to the uh, final time before the next section. And it moves up to the G harmonic. And we move to a new section of the piece. This is kind of the B section, if you like. So coming out of uh, the original bit, play A, B, hammer on, D, E hammering on, and then I hit this open G, the G harmonic here. And the chords that I'm playing are, it's actually an E flat major chord. I'm playing the, the tenth with my third finger, the, the G harmonic and then I play the E flat with my second finger and then I play F and open D and then E and the C so the E is on my little finger and the C is on my second finger G, E flat, D, F and then the E there and the C here and then to bring it back to the original section of the piece I just go down the scale. And we're back into the main, the main part of the song again. And that just repeats around four times. Now at the very end, I finish off um, by playing the little riff through and I play three pinched harmonics. Let's see how that sounds. So I've moved down onto the A, but instead of going to the G and continuing, I'm going to play. I've got an F sharp harmonic, a G, and then a D. And I'm using my thumb just to be above where the harmonic is. And then I'm plucking with the first finger. And to finish off, I let those ring. Actually, I think I might even play the G first. I just literally played the piece through, and I'm not 100% sure whether I play the and then the open and then the low G to ground them, or if I actually play the G and then the harmonics. It works both ways, so maybe have a listen back to what I was playing at the beginning uh, and choose what works best for you. Well, thanks for watching the lesson. I really hope that you enjoyed the piece today that we've been working on, uh, Tune for Rob. Please go and check out Rob Amster's music. I'm sure that you'll become as much of a fan as I am. And if you want more of these video lessons, you know where to go. Go and visit the website, discoverablebass.com.